Hello, welcome to Stampin' All Day with Bev, and welcome to YouTube replays. It's Sunday Night Live, and I'm gonna get started at 7 p.m. We have about three minutes. I try to get on just a little bit early so everybody can get their notifications and come on. Hi, Karen. Hi, Kathy. Thank you for coming back. Hey, Carol. Wonderful to see your names. The only thing that would be better is to see you in person. Hi, Linda. Linda Verts. Thank you for sprinkling. Thank you, thank you. Carol Schaefer, Carol Grove, thank you. Hi, Susan. I'll be right back. Okay. Hi, Karen Tenney. Hi, Annie. Hello, April. Nice to see you again. Thanks for coming back. Hi, Debbie. There's Terry. Glad to see everybody. It was uh, an uneventful day, which is good, right? No drama, no problems. That noise is my water heater. My shop is out in my garage. Hi, Virginia. And so when my water heater starts up, you can hear it. <clears throat> I'm really excited about tonight. We have one more minute. I hope you like what I'm gonna show you. Um, it's very, very vintage, and I've been having a ton of fun with it, and I hope you do too. It's not hard. Um, but you can take some time with it if you'd like. You can do it really quick. Hi, Connie. Or you can uh, take some time with it and really build some gorgeous, what I'm gonna call collages. Hi, Roseanne. So, um, I've been playing and playing and playing with it over and over and over because vintage is one of the styles that I favor. And so, um, when I come up with something that I like, then I just keep playing with it for a while. So I'm gonna give you some tricks and tips about what stamp sets would work well with this and hope that you enjoy it as much as I do. Okay, it's seven o'clock. We're gonna start off by telling you a few things. One is, I don't know if you saw my private, um, not my private, but my personal, Facebook page that one of my downline, Margaret Van Fleet, she has been with me for 20 years. She hit her million dollars Stampin' Up! sales. Yay! We're, she's planning a big party in, I think, I have the date written down, I think it's April, and um, it's going to be just delightful. Also, I hit another one of my goals that I was trying for. I'm starting out little, um, but on YouTube, I had um, a little bit, a little following, and I was shooting for 200, which is still small, but it's good for me, and I'm surpassed 200, so that's another yay I'm excited about. Happy news. And I'm getting closer and closer to my 500,000 or half million dollar in sales. So that's exciting too. So I'll let you guys know when that happens. It's going to take a little while, but I'm pretty close. All right. And then more good news. We have a winner for last, uh, the last cards I made on my last live. I made two of them. So we, hi Donna. So we have a winner for that. She can pick whichever card she'd like. Let me tell you who she is. Bev Stokes. So Bev, I don't have, I thought I did, but um, I don't have your address written down in my followers book. So um, if you can send that to me, and if anybody else wants to private message me their, um, if, you, if you think I don't have it, their address, when you win, then I'll have it, and I can just uh, send you out the card that you pick. So Bev, you can pick this one, or this one. So we'll say uh, landscape or portrait. Just tell me which one you want and then I will mail that out to you. Of course, it'll be in one of our new envelopes. Okay. 
this behind me. There we go. All right, um, here is my host code for January. Thanks, Susan. And there is my link to my shop and my email and my YouTube channel. So thank you if you've been sharing uh, my information because people have been really um, subscribing to YouTube, so that's great. Hi, Debbie, another Debbie. All right, so I'm gonna tell you what I'm using for this collage deal that I've got going on. Um, I'm using that six by six craft paper that held over. There's 20 sheets in the pack. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's this one here the craft six by six. I'm using that, but I think I'm not using that until the second item I show you. We need some regular tissue. So everybody has that at home. We need some playing cards, some regular playing cards. You might wanna have your wipes next to you for your fingers to keep them clean. We're going to use a blending brush. The stamp set that is the focal point is Easter Friends. Oh my gosh, this set is absolutely adorable. I love everything about it. Oh, I just love it. It mixes well with this collage with prized peony. And I, I said I was going to mention some stamp sets that would work well with this um, collaging. And then another, there's quite a few of them actually. And then another one I chose is enjoy the moment. All right, but you can look at your stamp sets and see which ones would team up well once you see what I'm doing. The inks that I'm using are Memento Black, Blushing Bride, Pear Pizzazz, hi Janet. Early Espresso, and for the second project, Crumb Cake. Okay. Then I'm gonna jazz it up a little bit with our rhinestones. And the uh, Melody, what's it called? Music Melody, it's on the carryover flyer. Mary Melody 3D Embossing Folder. Remember I said last week, I'm so glad they carried that over because I was using, already playing with this collage and I, I used it for that. And then also the Hive folder. Then I'm going to be using some foam adhesive strips for one of the projects. And I'm going back to our Celebration Marvelous paper on one of the projects. And then, you know how I like to bring in what we already have at home from last celebration, this uh, bedazzled paper. I'm using little tiny strips of that, if you have that. All right. I'm using two punches, the ovals, and the corner rounder. The corner rounder, you don't have to, you can, uh, it's just up to you some ribbon and some baker's twine. The ribbon is petal pink. And the baker's twine has petal pink and white and it's called snail mail twine. Okay, so those are the items that I'm using. And I'm gonna turn you down to my desk now so you can watch me work. You love making bookmarks with Playing cards, yes, this is another way you can use this, Annie. Very good idea, very good. Okay, let me turn you down. Playing cards, hi Joan, are um, just a great stability underneath your uh, stamped work, hi Pam. And um, so that's one reason I'm using them. Another reason I'm using them is because if you're a scrapbooker, 
they are the great size to fit inside pockets when you make books and or you have pages and you have pockets that you want to fill within your scrapbooks these are good to layer on now you i just take any card it doesn't matter to me hi mary yay i'm glad you made it um it doesn't matter to me which card i use i haven't been picky about that at all because the cards very subtly show they're very subtle sometimes a number or one of the uh, like the diamonds might show through a little bit and if it does that's really cool and if it doesn't then you know that's okay too but usually it does so i have one playing card that's already um i've used the blending brush on it but i'm going to use the blending brush on this one and then in my packet i have my base card base and i'm using early espresso cardstock and it's just cut at four and a quarter, the whole length of 11, and scored in the middle at five and a half for my card base. Then I cut another piece at two and four and a quarter by two and three quarters. There. You're gonna need a little scrap of some type to stamp Happy Easter. I am making this one an Easter card, but this you're gonna see can be a baby card. It can be something for a bedroom. It can be for anything, but I have Happy Easter already stamped. Oh, I need to turn you guys around. I see that's backwards. Let me see here. There we go. Okay, so Happy Easter is stamped already and I'm gonna cut that out. And then a, a piece of cardstock, um, as long as it's bigger than the, than the playing card, so you can just make it whatever size you want and run it through the, the hive folder. Just did that in advance to save a little bit of time. And then a scrap piece of early espresso. So when I cut this piece, I had another piece left over and I stamped the peony in early espresso ink on early espresso uh, cardstock and um, that part is ready for you. you trying to stay awake cookie bless your heart <laughs> okay so let me get started I'm just gonna pile all these pieces up together so I know where they are when I need them okay do you want to see my card I'm gonna show my one of my projects now in case cookie has to um, go to sleep she's really tired so here is the card and i'm going to pull my focal point out and i'm going to get really close to the camera so you can see all the detail in this collage look at that and then all the detail in the card with the color on color peony set. Thank you. So this is a card that stands up like this and then I have um, another project I'm gonna show you too. So the first thing I do when I start this um, project is I take my early espresso ink and my blending brush and I, um, thank you, I blend onto the playing card. Thanks, Carol. And you're gonna notice when I hold on to this with my fingers that my fingerprints are going to pick up some of this ink because it's wet. And these playing cards, I, they were my parents. They used to go, um, to the casinos a lot and my dad played cards a lot so i guess he got them see how that happens but that doesn't matter because this is all going to get covered up so if you have those little spaces that's that's perfectly fine that's why i said you might want um a baby wipe with close to you so if you get ink on your fingers you can clean it off or if you get glue on your fingers you can clean it off Okay, so this one I did in advance so it would be dry. This one, as I'm gonna make two tonight, this one is gonna dry over here on the side for a minute. Now I'm gonna go to my Momento Black ink. 
I just showed it to you. There it is. Okay. And I'm going to go to my Melody folder and bring my die cutting machine up. And I am going to ink up the top of my Melody folder with the black ink. And you can go very light or you can go very dark, whichever you prefer. You'll know after you make one or two of these how you like it. And I use, uh, I, I use this twice, so I don't ink up the folder a second time, but I do put a second piece, because I'm making two projects, I am going to put a second piece, look at this, a second piece of uh, tissue through this folder right now without re-inking the folder. And this time it will be lighter, and I wanted to show that to you. So you can see the difference and you'll know right away which one you prefer. I actually like them both and used them both, but you may have a preference. So this one's a lot lighter. And if you use it a third time, it'd probably be almost white, as if there's no ink on there at all. Okay. So let's take the one, the darker one, the first time. And I'm going to put this over with the second project so I don't lose it. Okay, so now I'm going to take the playing card. And I am just going to lay this tissue over it without adhering anything. Just so I can see where the playing card is and where I want to stamp. So I'm going to take the bunny from the Easter Friends stamp set. Some of you have already ordered this stamp set and if you have, you're gonna be pretty happy right about now. It's absolutely adorable. I'm gonna ink up the bunny and I'm using the Early Espresso because I want him to stand out on this collage. And I'm gonna place him right where I know um, I need him to be on that playing card. I'm gonna hold it down and let this tissue soak it in very well. Okay, there he is in the collage of music. All right, now I'm going to take this stamp set it's called Enjoy the Moment. And I'm going to use one of the buds in the stamp set. So this one here. And the Blushing Bride ink. I want everything to be pretty soft. And now I'm just going to stamp randomly closer to the bunny because remember he's going on to that playing card as his base for to be sturdy so it's not too big of an area okay then I'm going to take the leaves in the stamp set I think I'm going to take the smaller ones And the pear pizzazz ink and I'm just gonna add these to the bud just like that so just random See how cute that is okay then there are these little tiny, oh, seeds or pods. I don't know exactly what they are. 
and I'm going to go just back to my pink. and add those little pods around. And you could definitely add other colors if you'd like. It's just all up to you. And then um, in, the, in the Easter Friends, there is some grass. So I think I'll add some grass to this one using the Pear Pizzazz ink. Okay. Now I'm going to take my playing card and set him on there. And I'm gonna get my glue, my liquid Tombow glue and I am just going to spread it around on the card. Hi, Irene. Okay. And then I'm going to put him down onto the playing card. And I'm gonna set that aside to set up for a minute. The glue is wet, therefore um, <clears throat> the tissue is fragile. And if I started to work with it immediately, I can and I have, but you might tear a little bit more than you want. So let's do the same thing again here. Seeing it twice. will help you if you decide to do this, and I hope you do. I think you'll love it. Now, um, where's my other card? Here it is. Just kind of seeing where I want my music notes to be and where I want my rabbit to be when I put it back onto the playing card. Now I can kind of go fast because you guys know what I'm doing. You can kind of just watch me in your head and say, yep, that's what she did the first time. So that's what we're doing again. I'll leave that green out because I need it for the leaves. Take my rosebud. Each one's gonna be different, of course. Okay, and then the little dots. Okay, so now the next step is right to put glue on the card, on the playing card. Hi Sandy, welcome. Try to get it on the edges here because that's mostly the parts that want to come up or not tear good if they're not glued down, all the way on the edges. And then set this down onto the playing card. Okay, so now we're gonna switch back over to this one. This one's set up a little bit more. And I am just gonna take my two thumbs and I'm going to tear the tissue and pull back against the playing card and I'm gonna try to have patience, and I'm just going to pull downward and rip this away from the playing card. Now, there's gonna be parts that are rough, and you have some options there. The rough look, I love. I think it's very vintage and stressed looking, but if you don't care for that, you simply have to tuck them under if you want a straight edge playing card. 
Now see how that corner started to pull away? I probably had a lot of glue there and it's not quite dry still. So I'm gonna carefully lift my fingers off so I don't rip it. And this is again where you need your wipe to take the, the little bit of stickiness you're getting from touching a wet uh, tissue paper. It's not real wet, but you can kind of feel the glue through there. Okay. So now you decide whether you want it tucked under smooth. See how you can tuck it under all the way smooth like that? Or if you like the edges up and rough. I think I'll leave them up and rough on this one. And I am going to go to my hive paper and take my paper trimmer and cut this down to fit this card. Decoupage, yes, yes, it does. And I noticed that scrapbookers make beautiful books and pages and they buy this real thin paper that you can decoupage with. And I was thinking to myself, well, why couldn't I just make that on tissue with our stamps? And therefore we are so not limited to purchasing papers this thin that, oh, thank you for the hearts, ladies. We can use any of our stamp sets for any occasion that we want and just go with it. So now I'm gonna go back to my blending brush. You can also leave it alone at this point if you don't like the sponging look. The sponging, however, gives it an antique feel, even more vintage. And you should have heard me when I was first started thinking about making these. I, I was like, could I do that? Let me play. And when I was playing, I was <gasps> ooh and an on, and I really, really just couldn't stop. I just love, love, love the look. My poor friends, I kept telling them, you should see what I'm doing, but you have to wait. Okay, so now another choice. Do you like the white? Um, oh, hi, Laura. Ru if I call you Laura one more time, it's Rosemary. Her last name is Laura, and I call her Laura. She's probably laughing at me. Um, you could leave it white, or you can antique this also. See that? Start off your paper and pull it in. Go into your corners, get them a little bit darker than the rest. And just go all the way around. And this live might take a little bit longer than I normally do, not much, just because I wanna show you a couple of things. And then on Tuesday, I'll show you more because the stamp set, the uh, Friends, Easter Friends, it also has a little chick and a duck. So I wanna show you those guys too, but not tonight. I'll show you guys those Tuesday. So there we go, look at that. How much more vintage. Um, that looks with that there. And then you can take your corner rounder. The, the playing cards are rounded. So that's what made me think maybe I should round these also. And right now during celebration, um, you know, if you spend $50 on products or you get the stamp set, let's say, or maybe both of these stamp sets, the Peony and the, the Easter Friends, um, and you get your order to $50, then uh, we've been playing with the Marbleized, Marvelous, it's called Marvelous, that you can earn for free. So let's take a piece of that and take this one step further by bringing in a little color right behind that and see how delicate and sweet that becomes. Okay. So I'm gonna put these two down together. Okay. 
Okay, and now I'm going to take my paper trimmer again. And I, I just, depending on the sides of your cards, you know, it would be really cool too. I was thinking this later, but I haven't, I haven't been going out, so I don't um, know where I'd get them. Probably Walmart or Target, but they have jumbo playing cards, right? So you can make even bigger collages if you, if you want. Exciting. Okay, so there, look how pretty that pink looks under there. And again, let's round these corners. Are you guys liking this? I hope so. I'm totally in love. So many different things you can do. Hi, Margo. Um, and I'm going to fill your brain, I hope, with other ideas on what to do with the collage once you've once you've made them. Need some more ink on here. You know, we have our lace ribbons. We oh man, you can just you can just go to town with this. All right. So then we put that down there. Look how cute. And he's flat completely right now, he or she. And um, I felt like we needed some dimension. So, how do we get some dimension? We take this tissue paper that's left over. Let's move this little guy out of the way. And we take our pear pizzazz and our blushing bride and we do some direct to paper here I flip it over just to kind of get most of it off onto my scrap And then I cut a piece, or you can tear a piece, whatever you'd like to do. Kind of a rectangle shape. And I didn't measure, just, you know, just any size you really want. And I'm gonna fold it in half, but first I'm gonna put some glue in there so it'll stay closed. I'm gonna put it this way though, down the middle this way, just a little bit. And then I'm going to fold it over itself. Leave the ends open, untucked like that. What's the tool you're using on the edges? The blending brushes. They're called blending brushes and they're in the big annual catalog. I'm going to add some more little glue right there. And then I'm going to squeeze up, hi Judy, in the middle here and pinch. And I have a little bow tie to 3D him. So this one, and I like that there's pink on part of it and not pink on the other. Needed to be trimmed up just a little bit, just a hair, no pun intended. <laughs> and um, now you can take a mini glue dot. You're welcome, Irene. <clears throat> and if, if I miss a question, because I'm looking down at my project, if I miss a question, I promise you that I will uh, watch this replay later and I will answer you, I will reply and answer your question. I put a mini glue dot back there behind the bow tie. Now it's a little bit wet from the ink, so I'm not gonna mess with it too much right now. I'm gonna let it dry and then I can poof the bow tie 
better later. Isn't that adorable? Oh my goodness. All right, so still save these scraps, we're not done. So let's go to the card base. So remember I said, I gotta clear a spot here. <clears throat> remember I said I had a four and a quarter by 11 piece of card base. So I'm gonna go to back to my peony set. Now the reason I picked the peony set, this is a peony, obviously. But for me, my imagination, I don't know what to call it, my craziness, my insanity, whatever. <laughs> I thought when it was stamped color on color that it looked like cabbage, like a big cabbage blossom. So maybe, maybe not, but see what I'm saying? And I just thought it added to the Victorian look. It's subtle. The color, the contrast of the dark espresso and the uh, pink and the music notes, the whole works just all went together for me and I just loved it. Now I don't have to worry about the bottom because I'm going to make a little pocket that goes on like this so I can put my collage in the pocket. So I'm going to stamp the pocket prior to putting it on the card and I'm just going to do um, a background like I just did on the card base just like that and then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm going to go to my foam adhesive strips pull one off So I'm going to just put some down both sides and the bottom to form my, to have the lift for my pocket. Oh, you agree, Debbie, that it looks like cabbage. I'm glad. I think it's just stunning. I do, I really do. All right, so now I'm gonna place this on my card. A little bit of tissue there. Place this on my card and I'm gonna come over, bring my collage over and I'm gonna place it in there and see where the bow tie lands. And then I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm just gonna kind of give myself a rough guide on where I need to punch out using the oval punch. So when I uh, slide the rabbit into the pouch, the uh, bow tie lands in the right spot. Did I say that clear enough? Okay, we're gonna pull off the backing of the strips and these strips are in my adhesive bags. If anybody wants, I still have some. If anybody wants to take part in that, they come in that. Okay, let me open this up flat and then set this down to make my pocket. then you can just put your card in just like that. Now, we need a little bit of bling on his bow tie. Debbie, you want an adhesive bag? Okay, look at that. And then we're going to take 
two more steps. This is pretty as it is. But look when you take the cutout peony and you add it. Wherever you want to add it, you're gonna cut pieces of it off depending on where you lay it. It just gives it some more dimension. And then I take the Happy Easter, hi Lorianne, and I am just going to fussy cut by moving the paper up and down around Happy Easter. Let me see, how did I put the other one on? One word or two? Two. So I cut happy apart from Easter. And the white starkness is easy to darken by using the blending brush again. So I will do that so everything coordinates well. There's happy and then Easter. Same thing. Just move your paper and you'll get some nice cutting there with not much effort. It's fast and it leaves a really nice design around your words. Okay. So let me take my happy and Irene, here are the blending brushes again. And you just start off your paper and Gradually go back onto it, and you can antique your images. And you, could, of course, can use any color you'd like. I have a whole stack of them here, so I can use them for, you know, I don't want to, you can wash them, rinse them, let them dry, and change colors but I'm working all the time, and so I want a brush for the colors I use most often. Okay. So let's take this little guy back out. And I wanna show you another trick. Oh gosh, you guys, I'm keeping you long. I hope you don't mind. I know Cookie probably went to sleep because she's up late. Remember, remember, um, these little dots we get in our paper pumpkins that we never use. Well, look at them up close. They have little gray, some of them have little gray in them and they have little letters and numbers on them, some of them do. So they were laying on my desk and I thought to myself, huh, if I just, and there's, they've got stick them on them. So if I just use these and I put one on each end, and I try to get the ones that have a little bit of gray in them. Do you use soap and water on the brushes? I just use uh, water, um, but you can use soap, I'm sure. I just run, I just run them under running water until the uh, water runs clear, and then um, then they're clean, and let them dry completely. Well, those two came off on my finger. So I thought these little dots across the top just added something, and I don't use these from my paper pumpkins normally. So I thought, well, heck, now I can use them whenever I do a collage. Just, you know, they're, they, they kind of mimic the hive too. They're round, and um, they've got a little color to them. And then we just don't waste them, right? Okay, so there we go. See how that, I just added another little, this is collage, this is layering and layering right, right over each other. Go back to your glue, and I'm gonna put a little bit behind each word. And then I am literally gonna set Happy Easter in the vicinity of these dots, but not cover them up completely. They're just a little added texture there. Happy Easter. You don't have to add 
Happy Easter. If you don't want to make this an Easter card, you can. it can be a baby card for a baby shower. It can be for a little girl's room. Um, for a little girl, happy birthday, whatever you want it to be. Okay, so now what did I do with my flower? I knew I was going to drop it. My peony. Should have glued it on first. Well, I've lost it, and I'm taking forever showing you a bunch of different stuff, so I'm just going to put it, see the peony on here? And then I took, for more glam, I took the 6x6 bedazzling paper that you earned last celebration, and I just cut little strips and set it across the top of the um, pocket. So there's that one. Hi, Natalie. Okay, so now we have um, these done, this one. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside. And I'm gonna rip. See, this one's much drier now. So I can rip, be a little more aggressive with it and not worry about tearing because there's, it's not wet and soft. And like I said, even if you do tear a little bit off and your playing card shows, that's okay. You can either, if you don't like that, you can layer on top with more tissue and patch it, or you can leave it like, you, like, like it is. Now, the playing cards. See, the six shows up in this one. And on one of my other ones, the spade is showing there a little bit. Look at the heart is showing here. So you can see through them um, and see what image is on the card sometimes. So I made a bow tie on, um, well, let, let me not get off track. Let me go to the six by six uh, craft paper. Look how good that looks with it too. I wanted to show you that. I think that looks so good. So I used that one. To layer this time just going to give you another idea because if I received a card like that even if it was for my daughter <laughs> I would probably say can I have that rabbit and um, I want to do something with that so I'm going to take my six by six bedazzling paper oh here's a strip already cut good all right and I am going to layer across like this. So let me put glue here. And snip. I'll cut it off better in a minute. I just want it to dry. Just put some here this time, see if that works faster. that off and I love that we're just using little bitty snips of this because this paper is awesome and we want it to go far right okay and then I'll put this one there and I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna trim all that okay so did you guys get the memories and more cards and envelopes if you did and you're like me, you have some left over. This is the large envelope from the Memories and More holiday catalog with the gingerbread suite. So what I did was I cut a piece of, car, of um, the backing of our DSP uh, packets and I slipped it inside. So, it's, so now it's very, very thick and it's not gonna bend and ruin. I'm putting glue on the flap so I make sure that it stays closed. Okay, so the front of it is already cute, but we're going to take color on color. So 
crumb cake. On to craft is the closest I think we can get to that. I'm gonna clean off my stamp because I had um, espresso on it already. So I'm gonna clean off my stamp. Okay. All your work is beautiful, but this is one of my favorites. Oh, thank you, Annie. You know, I agree with you. I agree with you that this is my favorite. Um, I can't stop. I can't stop. <laughs> oh, gosh. But, you know, it's so rewarding and, and so fun. And when you... Um, give this to a friend or you set it up in your home or your child's room or your granddaughter's room or wherever you put it and they see it they they look at this they are going to love it as much as you do one it's made with love pure love right and um i mean I just, it's my style though. I love vintage. If you don't like vintage, then this might not be for you. But you can use other um, stamps and, and make it not vintage, you know, a collage, but in another way. Uh, maybe, maybe cars or birthday cakes or I don't know. You just have to play with your stamp sets and see what works together. So I'm trimming these off really like the shimmer and shine that that gives that okay so I'm gonna put that down with dimensionals just for some lift thanks Debbie and this is where you could use your strips too just to get it um, completely level and not have any sagging parts but I'm just going to use the end of these uh, dimensionals right now and I forgot to tell you guys what the prize for the month is too so if you place an order with me this month your name will go into a drawing and someone will be randomly picked with the from the wheel and they will win uh, they'll have a choice of what they're going to win and I'll tell you why because one of the choices is a celebration stamp set and it's the hundred dollar stamp set if you spend a hundred dollars you could choose this free so some of you might not spend a hundred dollars and have no chance of getting this for free so this is one of the choices but if you already got this for free or you get it for free before celebration is over then you can choose this beautiful pool party ribbon so that's the two choices this month. So look at this. Isn't it gorgeous? But it's like, what do you do with that, Bev? Well, when I cut this, this uh, six by six craft paper down, and what did I cut it to? I think it was, uh, let me check real quick. Three by four, I believe. Yep, three by four. When I cut, so the paper was six by six. I cut this to three by four. Then I had this piece left over. So I took the piece that's left over and I folded it in half. And you're gonna to wanna to use your bone folder to burnish the fold. Then you're gonna take your, oh, thank you, Bill. Then you're gonna take um, your snips and you're gonna cut up at a triangle up to the fold. Hi, Stephanie. And then you're gonna go back to your paper trimmer. It looks like two legs now. You're gonna go back to your paper trimmer and you're just going to score. And I did not quite an inch, but it doesn't really, it doesn't matter. Okay, three quarters of an inch or so. And then um, <clears throat> you're gonna fold these up like this. Okay, then you're gonna take some glue and here you're going to have to let it set up a minute. So letting it set up means you put the glue on, and then you let it set, and it gets really, really tacky. 
once it's tacky, it's gonna get on the back of here and it's going to stick. It's not gonna slide around. You're not gonna have to put clothespins or anything to hold it and you're not gonna have to stand there and hold it until it dries or anything. But once you do that, you're gonna have a picture frame holder and your, and your, um, your card is going to, your little project is gonna stand up on itself. It's an actual picture frame. But look how I decorated her. So the card I made, I put a bow on him. This time I put the bow on her on top of her head and look at the little flower. So to make the flower, we go back to that tissue that we had and we rip and we just crinkle and twist at the bottom that easy so hi Margaret and then we find some of the green here it is again I like to make a rectangle is this crazy you guys <laughs> is this just not crazy um, okay so we're gonna do the glue again showed you this once but I'm gonna show you again and we twist it there we put some more glue here in the middle we put our little bud there Now everything's wet, so it's gonna to stick to your fingers. That's what this is cloth is for. And pinch, that glue is gonna hold there. And you're gonna let this dry if you have any patience at all. I'm really bad with that. And then you're gonna play with the leaves after everything's dry and you're gonna see if that's too large or not. I don't, I don't think it's too large, I like it. So I'm just going to, because I like it, I'm not gonna cut anything down. I'm gonna just get a mini glue dot. And stick it down. And then if I come back later and I decide those leaves are a little bit too much for me, I can then trim them with my, with my scissors. I'm not gonna take the time to make a bow. You guys know how I did that. And you can see it on this one. And then put your little gem there because I want to show you how to do the, the little ribbon bow. And for the first time, I've had you guys a whole hour. I apologize, I hope you're okay with that. Um, double it. Thank you, Kathy. What a sweet thing to say. And um, make your bow. It's okay. Oh, good. Thank you. Another mini glue dot. Set that there at the knot. Aw, thank you guys. Trim that up. I like longer little trails like that. You guys are imagining the bow on her head, right? Or maybe she doesn't need one, it's up to you. Now we're going to, I'm gonna flip this over and set this down. Just like this. See how it just stays now because I let it set up? Take my bone folder. Push down right down the middle. You love her, Roseanne, so do I. And there she is little picture frame all set up ready to go wherever you decide to put her here's the other one she's a little bit darker 
This one, her flower is a little bit bigger, but see how they just all are different. See, can you see the spade right on her chest right there? And then this, here's another card. And uh, let's see what we can see under here. I don't see a, any of the playing card under this one at all. So they're all different. This one has the uh, bedazzle paper behind it if you want more shimmer. Okay, so let me clean up. I made a mess. And I want you guys to be able to see very clearly what we have going here without all the mess in the way. So, pocket card. This one has the peony on the right. And because this one, the rabbit, I stamped it more to the left. The uh, oval is more to the left. I showed you how to do that to get it, make sure you get it in the right spot. And then the picture frame. I'll leave one standing up and one laying down. And then this one has got the uh, marvelous paper behind it, free from celebration with a $50 order. This is the one I made tonight. And then this is the one that I had done earlier as a sample. This one does not have the extra peony on it. Okay. There you go. So you have maybe if you need to take a, a picture or anything, a snapshot with your camera, that's a little cleaner and less fussy for you. There we go. A whole hour you were with me tonight. I appreciate every one of you. And I'll wait for a few seconds for any questions. If not, I will let you go. If I forgot to tell you anything, please, please ask. Thank you for the hearts. Yay. Oh, good, Annie. Yay. Thank you, guys. Good night. Sleep well. Bye-bye.